Hello, uh, so today we are going to create a database um, by using the AWS Academy uh, Learner Lab. So you should receive this email um, at the beginning of this uh, semester. Uh, so you can click Get Started. Uh, so this will direct you to the AWS Academy. And uh, you may also need to create your set up your password. And once you set up your password, and you can choose the student login, and use your uh, email and also the password that you set up, and then we will be logging into the AWS Academy uh, learning environment. So I already have the password and that set up, so I log in, and now you will see uh, this website that looks like. Um, GMU uh, Canvas. Uh, so actually, it is a Canvas uh, system, but it is the AWS Academy. And we are using this one as our lab environment. So um, all the labs will be done by using this AWS Academy Learner Lab, so this Canvas website. So let's go to modules. And let's just choose the Learner Lab. And here you can see that we have about uh, 100 credits um, that are available uh, in this class. Uh, so it's not showing up here, uh, but we, we do have 100 uh, credits. And now you can see this AWS now is, uh, see this red dot, that means this environment has not been started. So let's start the lab. And this will take a few uh, minutes. So uh, once the lab is ready, you can you will see that the dot will become green. All right, and now you can see that my uh, lab is ready. And now we can see that we do have a $100 credit. Uh, so now we can click this URL so that we are going to open our um, AWS uh, environment. And so now we can see the AWS console. Uh, see, this is a new version of the AWS uh, console. So uh, if you have learned, um, I took the cloud computing or big data classes, and you will notice that the console is slightly different. Uh, for this class, we are going to use the RDS service. So like if we type RDS, so that is the Managed Relational Database Service. So let's click RDS. And we are going to create our uh, relational database. So one relational database server. Uh, so let's say we want to create a database. And let's choose the standard create. Uh, for the engine, we choose PostgreSQL, and we want to use a free tier. So that's we just we want to minimize the cost. So if we choose free tier, then we don't have uh, a lot of uh, options. So we can only use a single DB instance. So that is enough for this class. Date identifier. So if you like, you can give it name. Let's say I three forty. And the, uh, the master username. So I would recommend that we put, we use a default one, although that is not recommended, but just to make everything easier. So let's use a default username and the password. Uh, so you can define your own password. So for the database, uh, just make sure it is eight characters and confirm uh, the password. Uh, configurations and because we are using the free tier, so we don't have other options. And 20 uh, gigabyte is enough for this class. And let's uncheck the auto scaling again, just to make sure we want to minimize the cost. And uh, the others, let's just choose the default. We choose the default VPC, the default uh, subnet group. Uh, we do want the public access because we want to access our database by using other tools. 
So this may not be the best practice uh, in production. But for our class, let's just enable the public access. Uh, for the additional configurations, so let's use the default uh, port. We also use existing default VPC security group and uh, authentications. So the password is fine. We don't need the performance insight. So let's uncheck that. Uh, additional configurations. So let's also uncheck the enhanced monitoring. Um, we don't also want the backup, automatic backup, because that will be uh, expensive. And uh, encryption is also not necessary in this class. So let's just use uh, the minimized version of the configurations. Uh, we also, uh, let's also, let's enable the auto version upgrade. Okay, so let's enable that. Uh, so here you can see the estimated cost. So the RDS free tier is available for 12 months. So we are using Academy, which is a, we already have 100 credits, but this service should be free. So it shouldn't, we should not use our 100 credit, uh, credits. And so everything is set. Let's create this database. So now we are creating a database in the in AWS, and uh, you can see the i uh, the database name, and now the status. So it is being created. Uh, so let's just wait for a few uh, minutes. Okay. And uh, so after a few uh, minutes, actually, uh, you can see that uh. uh the status of the uh, server is available. So now if I click this uh, data server, I can see that this is endpoint or that is a URL that uh, we can access this server. And we have the pod. Uh, before we connect to this server, we need to change the security group. So let's open this one into a new tab. So we need to allow uh, the other users or other services or other computers to access uh, this uh, database server. So we go to inbound rules and we add it. So let's add a new rule. Uh, for this one, we say we want the post GRE C call. So that is here post GRE C call. The source can be anywhere. Okay, uh, again, you have to be very, very careful for this one. So, uh, so that means any users, any computers in the internet can access uh, this server. Uh, so let's save that rules. Okay, so that rule has been saved. And now we can copy uh, this endpoint or this host, uh, um, host name. And now we are going to use our PG admin, which is uh, is a SQL editor to access our server. So PG admin has been installed into our uh, local uh, lab computers. You can also install PG admin on your own laptop and access your uh, database server after class uh, if you like. So here they are asking for the password. This is the password for PG admin, not for your database. So if this is your first time using pgAdmin, you can type a password so that you can control the access of your pgAdmin. And the next, let's right click the servers and we want to create a new server. So we want to add our server to this pgAdmin. Let's say this is i340. Uh, in the connections, let's paste this host address or the endpoint the port, the default is uh, 5432, uh, and we leave everything as default because when we created that database, we didn't change those settings. And this is where you need to type your password for your database. So that is, remember, that is uh, more than eight characters. And you can choose do you want to save your database locally or not. And uh, if you choose to save your database locally, so next time if you open the pgAdmin on the same computer and type the right password of your pgAdmin, 
you don't need to provide your password to your database server. Okay. So now let's say save. And now you can see I'm now able to access my uh, database server that I created on AWS. So if you open the database server, you can see there are two databases. And one is RDS admin and one is PostJS. So let's open PostJS. We have one schema within one schema. So that is a public schema within a public schema. And then we can see we have zero tables. OK, uh, so that's all we need to create the database now. So now we can close PG admin. And now if we go to the database, <clears throat> so to save the cost, so if you want to save the cost, you can go click this database and you can choose stop. So, um, so that means that when you stop your uh, RDS server, AWS will stop charging you. So, uh, so that is another way that can save your credits. Uh, we are using free tier, so uh, we should not worry about stopping the instance, but just to make sure that we can minimize the cost, the usage of, of, uh, of our credits. So let's stop it. And we don't need to create a snapshot because creating snapshot we are also uh, use, we are also um, generate cost. And also remember that the RDS will be stopped for seven days and after seven days, it will be started automatically. So that's fine. So we don't need to create a snapshot and stop it now. And now you can see uh, this one has been stopping. Uh, so where it has been stopping, so we can close those two tags. And here in our learner lab, so we can end our lab. So we can simply end this lab. So let's end and yes. OK. And now we can see this red dot. So now we can log out our AWS uh, Academy.